So in Western politics, there's the dichotomy between freedom versus safety. The right will prioritize freedom of speech and the freedom to not be tread upon by their government, and the left will prioritize the safety of laws that keep a cohesive society, as in we live in a society. So what this has turned into is prioritizing freedom over empathy, it would seem. So, for example, the way that the right to free speech has transformed over the last few years is this whole idea that we can say whatever we want and you can't do anything about it. And this has come at the cost of not caring about the way that our words affect people. The whole sticks and stones narrative has been taken way too far, and this is clearly exemplified in the rap with Ben Shapiro and Mr. McDonald called Facts, which I believe is still number one in the charts. I don't see this getting better. I see this dichotomy exacerbating due to the rise of social media and uh, well, Trumpism, as it's called, or just this whole, like, the fact that people are using the term Trump supporter as if that's kind of a movement for people to, to rally around. And this is exactly how Trump talks. He, he has these terms called Sleepy Joe Biden and Crooked Hillary. Like, he talks like a child and uh, like a bully or something. And, and this is just, you would think that people would recognize that, but no, they're rallying around that because more free speech. And yes, again, free speech is so important. You don't want to live in a country that does not have that kind of freedom. It's horrible. But like all things, they can become ideologies. All these concepts can become ideologies and they can be taken way too far. Like you can't just say that people need to be more responsible with their gun ownership or they need to be in, in two parent homes and then kids won't bring AR-15s to school. We need top down control on better regulation on these weapons because we're just assuming that all parents can, well, both of these assumptions take place, that all parents have the same ability to teach their children how to be responsible and not find their guns or whatever, or not, or not gain access to guns at too early of an age and know how to use them responsibly. And also assuming that everyone knows how to use a gun responsibly. I mean, we're going on traditionalist law systems that need to be constantly updated. A lot of people propose reviewing every law that we have every five or ten years or so, really, I think this needs to be done every single year, maybe even more often than that, because of the exponential change. We have this whole proposition that's been going around for, and we've known this for hundreds of years, thousands of years, like Heraclitus said, the only constant in life is change. So that exponential change has indeed been exponentially increasing like this, and we're somewhere along the top of this curve here, it, it would seem, while our human evolution is just like this. <laughs> Well, now we have AI, now we have uh, social media rapidly manipulating everyone. I mean, the need to massively update our laws is becoming much more problematic and urgent. And I don't see another way around this other than better management of society. Because society does not just manage itself. That's a fantasy. People have to be guided to their best selves. This is why we have therapy. This is why we have life coaching and self-awareness practices and the mick mindfulness that we sell in little 10-step chunks in, the, in this country it would seem that the cognitive default that we see mostly on the political right is to prioritize logic and wanting to be right at the behest of our better judgment the idea being that your proposals may be correct when you tell people that they need to suck it up or they need to be more responsible in the way they have kids or in the way that they train their youth or whatever you want to give that attribution to but that's not really an argument. You have to be able to guide people to that responsibility. You have to be able to teach people how to be responsible in the first place. You can't just say, oh, you're not being responsible enough. There's your solution. Like, <laughs> and I, I see this in, in a debate that I recently watched on discussing the plastic problem. The, the argument was pointing out all of the ways that there's, like, there's plastic in my glasses. There's plastic in the like these little uh, reusable metal containers. Like that's, There's still plastic on top of that. This dude was very adamant about pointing out the the irony in the fact that people aren't abiding by their own rules, but that's not presenting any solutions. That's just saying, you're not trying hard enough, so what are we doing about that? Well, maybe funding the education system better so that people can learn how to be more responsible and attentive to their environment and, to, and be more able to respond to the harshness of reality. Perhaps that's where we should be focusing. And what does that require? Laws. This requires more and better laws, and this is what we're so reluctant to with our need to prioritize freedom over the safety of a, of a law system. And so we keep seeing this dichotomy of, <laughs> of one side prioritizing the need for laws and the need for top-down control and Hobbes' Leviathan and that whole thing, 
or a governmental institution to make sure that people do the right thing and make sure that people teach children how to be responsible. And then there's the political left that just says, there's this automatic assumption that people should just be able to always be responsible all the time, which commits the false equivalence fallacy, incorrectly assuming that one possesses a certain ability or characteristic, while everyone else should too, under certain, under similar circumstances. Everybody's brain does not work the same. This is a big flaw in intersectionality and and privilege and bias in thinking that, well, all brains work the same in diagnosis as well. People think, think that people can just suck it up and deal with the harshness of reality and not need diagnosis and not need medication to help get that jump start to where they can start being responsible in the ways they conduct themselves and handling reality. So what are we doing about this? It's like we're just complaining about the system and we're not trying to see eye to eye. We're only electing leaders that support our tribalistic and emotion-fed instincts instead of, and this applies to both sides of the political spectrum, instead of leaders that are going to get us what we actually want, which is better education and better health care. There is a problem in the electoral system where every election cycle, we're not seeing options for that on the ballot, or at least the people that are running, the ones that win are never the ones that are trying to push for better health care and better education. There's this whole money wins system in political campaigns now where literally every campaign, a campaigner except for one, I think Andrew Yang in the 2020 election was the only one that didn't have more than a million dollars or was not a multimillionaire, I should say. He was like a hundred thousand heir or whatever you want to call it. And that's that says a lot. So again, get out there and vote for better leaders and better systems and whatever we can do to change this system such that we stop electing these people, that's what we need to be priority, prioritizing. So we need to vote for better laws. I believe we need a direct democracy for, where people can vote for each individual issue. But it seems like we're far gone from that world as well. Anyways, let me know how you feel about this. Feel free to like and subscribe if you feel this video made sense. I certainly hope it does. Running these kind of videos is kind of like running a social experiment for me and my own mental health. So. Uh, please give me some feedback in the comments. I hope I've been nuanced and clear in the way I've communicated this. Have a good one, y'all.